Hello guys, Mr. Drake here again. I'm gonna do another video lecture to talk you through it. If you would like to listen, this one might be long because I kind of feel like I have a lot to say about this one. So if you wanna like put me on fast forward, that's fine. If you wanna just skip ahead to the part that you wanna see, that is also fine. Um, today, you're gonna have a warm up like usual. We're gonna go through lecture number six. You're going to have a paragraph response the big thing I want to point out here, we are going to have our first exam because I want to give you guys the most flexibility possible as well as keep you guys from cheating too much. Um, we're going to have an essay test. You guys can do it on your own time. You can turn it in as long as it is done by Wednesday at 11.59 p.m. It will. You will be turning it in through turnitin.com. So don't cheat. It'll be, there'll be more information to come. I'll tell you more about it on Monday. I just want you guys to be aware that you guys will be having a, an essay. It's only, it's a short, like two, three paragraphs. You can use your notes, that sort of stuff. More information to come. Just be aware. Now your warm up. You got two questions. First one, what words do you think about when you hear the words atomic bomb? Some of the sentence starters I had for that one. When I hear about the atomic bomb, I think about death, destruction. I want you guys to come up with two more for me, okay? And secondly, are you personally afraid of North Korea using a nuclear bomb on the United States? Are you concerned that they might, they're, remember they're developing a nuclear bomb, and I'm going to show you something a little bit later that you can kind of see what kind of bomb they're developing and see how much damage it could cause us if it blew up near us but that's a little bit later so go ahead answer that i'm going to continue on the lecture today is going to be on japan and the atomic bomb your flt is i will be able to evaluate if the united states should have dropped the atomic bomb by writing a paragraph i know you guys have to write a lot of paragraphs i'm sorry but they're the best way for me to see if you guys are really kind of understanding and engaging with the material well so we'll keep doing them. Plus, it's helpful to be able to be able to write. So today we're talking about the end of World War II. We've gotten through victory in Europe, VE Day. We're looking for VJ Day, victory in Japan. And this comes about pretty quick after the atomic bomb. We're going to talk about the timing and why this happens when. But first, we got to talk about the Japanese offensive. After Pearl Harbor, remember, we talked about Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor was Japan's first step to get a foothold in the Pacific. They needed to knock out the big dog America so they could get more land. They also attacked the Philippines, the United States. That's a set of islands much closer to Japan than they are to America. It's a U.S. colony. Japan attacks it a few days after Pearl Harbor. The, the general that's in charge, I think he's an admiral, Douglas MacArthur, he holds out for a while, for a couple months, about four or five months, until he finally gives in. And there's this thing called the Bataan Death March. This is where captured British soldiers and American soldiers had to march through the jungle, 85 miles. They did not get enough food, water, or medicine. They were forced to march. They could not stop. This right here is a, is a painting of the Bataan Death March. This, um, the Japanese felt that if you were, you should never surrender. People do not surrender. You fight until you die or you cannot go on any longer. That idea, throwing it back all the way to seventh grade, is Bushido, the way of the samurai. Japanese, they would rather die in battle as cowards or then as cowards who do not deserve life. So if you could not walk and you gave up, the Japanese would kill you. That's these bodies here. That's what's happening to this man right here. This is known as the Bataan Death March. This way of thinking led the Japanese to do a lot of what we would consider um, harsh and really, really angry, ain't bad things to people. So my reflection question on this slide, 
is should the Allies respond to Japan's actions with equal or greater force? Americans have seen how the Japanese treat the people that they fight. They decide that they need to come back and they need to fight hard. But do you think that the Americans, the Allies, should respond to Japan's action with equal or greater force? This is like if someone is picking on you and treating you like real bad, do you go above what that person is doing to you? Do you do even more to hurt them? Or do you just rise to their level? Take your time, answer that question. I'm going to continue on. I'm going to talk about a couple battles. First, we have the Battle of Coral Sea. This happens in May 1942. This is an attempt by Japan to isolate Australia, to keep Australia from fighting any more in this war. Because remember, Australia also closer to Japan. Japan is like right up here. This is where those aircraft carriers that were not at Pearl Harbor really come into play. Most of the battles in the Pacific focus heavily on um, airplanes, dogfighting. A lot, a lot, a lot of fighting. So those aircraft carriers that the Japanese could not sink came back to haunt them. The United States wins this battle with the airplanes from these two aircraft carriers. Then we have what's known as the Battle of Midway. So the Coral Sea is right down here. Their plan was to come down here, take over all this stuff, all this Japan wanted. But they lost here. And then we have the Battle of Midway. Midway is an island right here near Hawaii. Japan tries to attack Midway, but the, you, the aircraft carriers have moved up they have taken they tried to take midway the aircraft carriers have moved up they intercept japan's navy again and the americans again win a dogfight battle of the midway is the first time that the japanese get pushed back though they get knocked back they were out here they get pushed back now the allies are on the offensive we have our allied offensive now the americans decide that their best strategy is called island hopping. If you look at this map, look how many islands there are in the Pacific. It's very difficult to land your soldiers on an island and take it over and take control of it. And most of these islands are really, really small. They're not that big. They're not even necessarily worth fighting over. So they decide they're going to have a plan called island hopping. They decide they're only going to take certain islands, islands that have a strategic value in the Pacific. And then from there, they can actually attack the Japanese islands themselves. So they're going to hop all the way around. They're not going to get all these islands. They're just going to hop to the important ones. So Guam becomes a very important island. Guam is down in here. That becomes a very important island for the United States. They bomb Japan with B-29s. They take it over. This becomes their beachhead, and it still is a major uh, Navy base for the Americans today. My grandpa, he was in the Navy in the 50s after World War II. He was stationed at Guam for a lot of years. So my question for you guys, why do you think that island hopping could be an effective strategy. Why do you think that the Americans and the allies decided they weren't going to fight all of these islands? They're only going to pick the big ones, the ones that are important. Why do you guys think that is? I'm going to continue on talking about a couple more of the important islands. We also have Iwo Jima and Okinawa. These are the two islands we're going to talk about next. And look how close these islands are to Japan. I want you to remember that. So the Battle of Iwo Jima, this is the costliest battle in the Pacific. 20,000 U.S. Marines were hurt or killed in one month. But once the Americans took this island, they could now bomb Tokyo. Remember, Iwo Jima is right here. They were close enough to they could bomb Tokyo, the capital of Japan. 
the first bombing raid on Tokyo killed over 83,000 people. Now, you know that those aren't all soldiers. Those are, some of those are civilians as well. They also fought at Okinawa. Okinawa is a little bit even closer to Japan. This was the island that they needed to have if they were going to do a land invasion on Japan. If they were going to get this land invasion, they needed this island. This island cost the Americans 50,000 people. 100,000 Japanese soldiers were hurt or killed. And this is where we really start to see um, that idea of, you've, I'm sure you guys have heard of the kamikaze. This is where we start to see the kamikaze. Kamikaze comes from a term called divine wind. This goes way back to if you know who uh, Kublai Khan is. The Mongolian warriors that controlled most of this area way back a couple hundred thousand years ago, they would come in and try to invade Japan. They tried it twice. And both times, these giant storms in the Sea of Japan kept the Mongol warriors from getting there. And the Japanese refer to that as the divine wind or a kamikaze. They were, they called their suicide planes kamikazes because they were going to be another divine wind that was going to protect them from the allies coming to attack them. This is when the Japanese pilots started flying their planes directly into United States ships. They would use them as bombs themselves. This was not what they something they did at the beginning of the war. They did not do this until the very, very end when they felt like there was no other way for them to win. And the Japanese have this idea that it's better to sacrifice yourself than to surrender. And even then, most of the kamikaze pilots were not volunteers. They were people who were drafted in and told, this is what you're going to do. They would do it, but this is what they were told that they had to do. I found this quote from a Japanese naval captain. He said, there is no other way. The Japanese would fight like bees when they sting, they die. They were not going to go down without a fight, in other words. So I want you guys to think about why were there so many more Japanese casualties than U.S. and allied casualties? Why was there double the amount? Think about that. Why was there so many more? I'm going to continue on talking about firebombing. This was in uh, Japan. On the island, they had to build most of their buildings out of wood. They didn't have a lot of stone or brick or anything to build their buildings out of. So most of it was built out of wood. The Americans knew this. So they used what were called fire bombs, bombs that would cause would that would catch fire on buildings and just race through cities and just burn down in j just blocks and blocks and miles of city. They were extremely effective in Japan, where again, most of their buildings were built in, with wood. They also created something called the atomic bomb. And I'm confident all of you guys have heard of the atomic bomb. This at, the, at this point is the largest weapon ever invented. We now have hydrogen bombs and a couple other advances on the atomic bomb, but they use the same sort of idea. The atomic bomb recreates the power of the sun by splitting an atom that causes a chain reaction. It's called nuclear fission. This has the power to destroy the planet if enough of these are created. So there's a little diagram of how these things work. Basically, they split an atom at the very beginning, and that causes this massive giant explosion, leads to this mushroom cloud. Um, when they drop these bombs, temperatures get up to over 7,000 degrees. People are literally just instantly incinerated. Um, it causes wind of almost a thousand miles per hour. Um, one megaton of a bomb is like 20,000 tons of TNT, like those, the like dynamite. So during the war, Albert Einstein, he's a German that defected from Germany into America. He told the president, FDR, that the Germans were trying to build this atomic bomb which meant the United States became, 
joined they joined a race to see who could build this bomb first the americans or the germans now the americans and the allies defeated the germans before they could ever come up with they could ever figure out how to build an atomic bomb but i have two things for you what do you think would have happened if hitler had discovered the atomic bomb first how do you think things might have changed and two I want you to evaluate if it was worth it for the United States to put its resources into developing the most devastating weapon in the history of the world. Is it a good thing that the United States devoted their so many resources to this? Did they, why did they, could they have done something better, more constructive maybe? It's hard to say. Now, I wanna show you guys something fun. In the funnest way a nuclear bomb can be. There's this thing called nuke map. I have a, a link for it down here. I also have it over here for us. I'll set up on nuke map. You can decide you can drop a bomb wherever you want on Google Maps. And if you check casualties and radioactive fallout, it'll show you and tell you how many people would be impacted by this bomb. So as you see, I put it right here on Lawndale High School. We're kind of like right here. We'd be like right around here somewhere, right? I think we'd probably be like right here. And we're going to see the first bomb. You can pick out any bomb that they have that they know about, right? We've got North Korean weapons. We've got um, Davy Crockett. We've got all these little bombs. We're going to check out the Hiroshima bomb, the first bomb that the Americans dropped. It's called Little Boy. We have our casualties checked. We have our radioactive fallout check. We're going to find out how many people would be impacted if we were to drop this bomb on Lawndale High School. So here we go. And look how the fatalities go up and up and up and up. So at about 26 and a half thousand people would die from that. Now, if you're in this area right here, you're dead. If you're in this area here, you're dead. If you're in this area here, you're probably also dead. And this area here, there's a good chance you're dead or your life is dramatically, dramatically altered. If you are in this area here, if you're in here, that means you might not die, but you're gonna have deformities you're going to have a ton of actual pain um you're going to struggle life is going to be hard for you you can drag these around we can check out what what would it be if we dropped the nagasaki bomb it's a little bit bigger let's see and that would be 20 almost twenty nine thousand people and see how the circles have gotten just a little bit bigger so you can play around on this map you can bomb wherever you want on Google map. You can see how many people it would kill. It's kind of fun in a serious way, if that makes sense. Check it out. I encourage you to check it out. We will continue on. I have a video on the atomic bombs of Japan. It's a, few, a couple of minutes long. There's three questions for you guys to answer. Go ahead, answer those questions. I'm going to continue on. Here's a couple pictures that show the destruction of the bomb. You see how there's almost nothing left? This was a city. It was wiped out completely. See, there's like one building left standing and everything is just destroyed. So Hiroshima was the first city that was bombed on August 6th, 1945. 78,000 people died instantly and over 200,000 people died total. Over 200,000 people were killed by one bomb. And then three days later, Nagasaki, that's the second city that was bombed. 90,000 people died This at the point of explosion. Even more died overall. And again, no one really knew of the effects of radiation. People thought the bomb just exploded. It was a huge explosion, just like any other bomb. When the Americans were testing it out in those Pacific islands, the soldiers that were involved in it that were close nearby would just get a shower 
That was what they thought they all they had to do to get the nuclear material off. Just take a shower. That was it. And then you're good. Just shower. That's it. No one really knew the effects. Now, between the two bombings on August 8th, the Soviet Union also declared war on Japan, with meaning not only were they getting bombs, they were going to have to fight war against another person. Between these two things, Japan surrenders on August 14th, 1945. Now, I want you to look at this primary source that I have. It's a woman who survived um, the atomic bomb. I want you to read. I want you to highlight and add a couple comments. As you go through it, there's four questions. And then there is, we're going to skip through this, a paragraph response. I want you to answer on that document whether the United States should have dropped the bomb or not. I have a bunch of information on here. I want you to talk about whether the United States should have dropped the bomb or not. Now I'm going to go over a couple of reasons in favor and a couple of things opposed. So first, this the idea that it would end the war quickly and that it could save American lives. Some people think that if the Americans would have done a land invasion, it could have cost up to a, a million American lives. Um, I think this number is pretty high. It probably would have been in the low hundred of thousands, and it definitely would have cost a lot of Japanese lives as well. Remember, Japan, they a lot of their people believe in death before surrender, so there could have been tons and tons of casualties there. Also, even if this number wasn't a million, even if it was 100,000, I want you to think about how Americans would have felt if it would have came out that they could have used this weapon and kept all American lives safe. Think about that. Do you think they would have liked it or do you think they would have decided, no, we should have gone for the land invasion? Number two, it was also this idea that it could stop the spread of communism. Remember, America hates communism. They could they were using this to show the world that the United States has the baddest weapon on earth and they are willing to use it. So Stalin, be careful. Don't cross us. I will say, Historians do disagree on whether this was like a premeditated thing, like um, they dropped the bombs to show off, or if that was something they thought about after the fact, and they're like, oh, we could just, we could spin this, like, look how strong we are. So it's a little so so. Historians aren't sure if this was a reason before or a reason after. And then lastly, there's just the naivete. The idea that nobody actually knew how bad these bombs really, really were. Remember, the prevailing wisdom was you could wash off the effects of radiation with a shower. Radiation was an, an invisible enemy. Not many people knew about it. Um, that might have, knowing the lasting impact that these bombs had on the, the earth and the people, might have changed the decision to use it. But they didn't know yet. So it's hard to count that against them. Now, reasons against using the bomb. This is a moral crime. It killed almost only civilians. The two cities, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, were both um, industrial cities where they were building bombs. Um, they were building stuff to fund to help the war effort. But again, these aren't soldiers living in these cities. This is mostly civilians. So think about uh, any other countries. See if you can find any other countries that have used atomic bombs against people. And how do you think the world would react today if any country used an atomic bomb? Again, I think this goes back to my second warm-up question. This is why um, North Korea using their atomic bomb doesn't concern me a lot. Because if they were to use it, they would get punished so severely that their country probably wouldn't exist anymore. So I think it's more of a protection thing. Also, Japan surrenders. Many people think that Japan eventually would have surrendered. Maybe if the Americans just kept conventionally bombing them, 
they blockaded them, wouldn't let them get supplies, then Japan eventually would have surrendered. So also, the Americans only gave three days between the two bombings. Do you think if the Jap do you think the Japanese really had a time to uh decide whether they were ready to give up in this war or not after after they just had this first time ever bombing? There's an argument to be made that the Japanese were still just stunned. They hadn't even made any decisions yet. And then we hit them with another bomb before they could even gather their thoughts. So I want you to think about, do you think that the Japanese were still ready to fight forever? Or if they thought maybe surrendering was a good idea. So now once we finished our notes, I want you to go on to the plea of an atomic bomb survivor. Um, I want you to read what she has to say. I have four questions for you to answer. And then you're going to give me your paragraph. I have some more sentence starters for you to help you with just about all of your sentences. Um, these are the three things I want you to think about. Do you think it was a good idea? Do you think it was a bad idea? There is not a right or wrong answer here. This is something historians have um, talked about forever and ever and ever. And so I'm interested to hear your take on this. Do you think it's an important thing? It was a necessary thing. Do you think um, that the United States could not have dropped this bomb? Um, let me know and give me some reasons why you think the way you do. But that's it for today. Sorry, this one went a little bit long. I just like talking about this one. It's an interesting topic to me. So I'll catch you guys in the next one.